I think I know what the cobbled stone of the Martinez waterfront feels like to walk on. I think I can feel the freezing air of the boardwalk numb my ears. I think I can taste the flavour of dead sea life floating on the air of the fishing village. I think I can almost smell the rotten remains of whatever preventable tragedy happened at the dilapidated church. Disco Elysium doesn't so much feel like a narrative as much as an alternative history told by a fragmented mind begging to be heard. It captivates an audience, I think, purely on feel, vibes, however you want to put it. No one optimizes Disco Elysium because I think we all don't really care to see it all. We just want to feel Revachol before this Elysium goes the way of Disco. Why does Revachol feel this way? so tangible, so visceral. Video games, it seems, are at a unique advantage to capture feel and tone in a way that other mediums are limited. Reading Master and Margarita, one of the most theatrical and visual novels I've ever read, still only captures the mind with images. Matt Reeves, with his Planet of the Apes movies, managed to intricately bring to life the greenery, moss, fur, and rust being displayed on screen. The movie has texture because we can look at the frankly phenomenal CGI fur and imagine what that feels like, but we can only imagine. But you pick up a game like Bloodborne, and along with its insanely good Lovecraftian existentialist horror art direction, is able to capture a feeling, a drop in your stomach, a tightness in your chest. Because you as the player are walking through the world, press button to slowly open doors bigger than some buildings. Press button to cleave through hordes of beastly horrors the human mind fails to understand. Watch the effects of your actions, the cleaver spraying ghoulish blood across the room, the cause and effect literally smattering your clothes. That's tone, that's feel. Which brings us back to Disco Elysium, which presents a unique challenge because your primary source of input is clicking dialogue options and clicking where to move. Not much game feel you can pull from tapping words on a screen. LAUM I think knew early on that with a game so heavily relying on dialogue without other mechanics like puzzles or combat, they had to justify this story being told in this medium which as a whole has struggled to cleanly integrate story into gameplay for the majority of its existence with some clear exceptions. Even games with quite good stories like The Last of Us have clear distinctions between gameplay and story segments. How do you contextualize gameplay systems into writing when there's such different forms of interaction? With Disco Elysium being a CRPG derived from tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons, LAUM seems to have found their secret source in skills. Dungeons and Dragons, and for the purpose of this discussion, Baldur's Gate 3, have skills you can put points into strength to perform physical feats, intelligence to outthink your opponent, charisma to take advantage of that scimitar tongue. But with Disco Elysium lacking combat, it was able to keep the format of skill checks and dice rolls to fit into the genre, but recontextualize the skills to better fit the themes and settings of Disco Elysium. Rather than putting points into just charisma, you might spec into one of my favorites, a spirit decor, representing your connection to the police force. Satellite officer Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. Or electrochemistry, to be more in tune with your body's desire, usually for alcohol. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Or perhaps volition, your innate willpower. You really need to get your shit together. This is nearing a complete meltdown. The damage is truly extraordinary. The skills are vague enough to be fresh and interesting, but familiar enough to feel your way through naturally. Perhaps to better explain this point, I present shivers which I initially thought to be similar to Encyclopedia, which exposition dumps facts onto you, but where Encyclopedia gives the blunt truth on the situation around you, Shivers is best explained through its in-game description. Raise the hair on your neck. Tune into the city. Now that being said, in Disco Elysium's most brilliant move, the skills you spec into don't just serve a practical purpose. In fact, sometimes a detrimental purpose. Your skills will 
talk to you. They don't just roll snake eyes when it's most inconvenient. They lie to you. They influence you. They interact with each other. You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes. He's talking about you, you sinewy idiot. They argue. They have opinions on the people, the world around you. They are often compromised. Encyclopedia isn't just a tool, it's a personality, a part of you. You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. That while being very helpful, will often not have your best interests at heart. Can you perhaps think of a time your electrochemistry told you the next shot of tequila was a good idea? CRPG characters usually serve as blank slates for the player. Baldur's Gate 3 gives you maybe the most intricate and free-flowing form of self-expression through its character creator and dialogue choices. Be whatever kind of scumbag or hero you want to be. But there's also a wonder in experiencing such an intricate world through a specific person's eyes. Harry can be a bit of a blank slate. Have a proclivity for being a horny communist? Sure, go ahead. Want to be an art cop? The worst kind? Fence sitting to such an extent it forms an actual shitty political ideology? Have fun, go ahead. You can mend Harry to certain ideas, but whether you spec more into psyche or physical, intelligence or motor skills, the skills are always there. Some just get louder than others. Despite everything, it's still Harry. The alcoholic, shame-ridden, out-of-his-prime, pathetic piece of shit that in spite of a world telling him to stay down time and time again, gets up off that couch because Harry, it seems, doesn't want to be this kind of animal anymore. This kind of depraved worldview, put surprisingly well by Trent Heidelstrom, seems to be inherently and tied, narratively speaking, to Harry's worldview. Look at the ruins. The neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Totally. As far as character writing goes, it makes sense, but to me it speaks more to how Harry isn't just a vessel into this world for exposition purposes. He is a product of this world. He just might not know that yet. Harry, and by extension, the skills, are a far better insight into Revishol and its people more than any book you can find in the game. Revishol is a broken place that by means more unnatural than the game leads you to believe initially, changes the people that live there. The mechanics of Disco Elysium make you feel the effects of your decisions and your insight into the game by feeding it back to you. Revishol will bring you to your knees, make you beg, scream, make you pale from the sight of its darkest corners. Revishol wants you to pay a cost many can't afford. It's a tough game to get through at times, to be honest. It's very grim, demoralizing even. I think my volition knows what the cobbled stone of the Martinez waterfront feels like to walk on and somehow keep going. I think my electrochemistry can feel the freezing sea air of the boardwalk numb my ears, craving a whiskey to warm me. I think my empathy can taste the flavor of dead sea life floating on the air of the fishing village and hope the inhabitants feel warm with full bellies these harsh months. I think my shivers can almost smell the rotten remains of whatever preventable tragedy happened at the dilapidated church, and finally ask you for a better world to stand in. A world where Lilianne shouldn't have to worry about her village being uprooted. A world where Rene can mourn his beloved without anger at a system that failed him. A world where Ruby can stop running. A world where a couple can spend their whole lives searching for something that doesn't exist, that no one believes in, and... Thank you.